Hey guys, we're doing free code camp again today. We're going to be doing another JavaScript algorithm. The one we're going to be looking at today is the sum of all Fibonacci numbers. Hopefully you guys are aware of what Fibonacci numbers are. If not, not to worry. We'll go over them real quick. It's fairly simple. Let's read the directions first. Given a positive integer num, return the sum of all odd Fibonacci numbers that are less than or equal to number. The first two numbers in the Fibonacci sequence are 1 and 1. Every additional numbers in the sequence is a sum of the pre two previous numbers. The first six numbers of the Fibonacci sequences are 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, and 8. For example, sum fibs 10 should return 10 because all odd Fibonacci numbers less than or equal to 10 are 1, 1, 3, and 5. Let's look at a couple other examples, but before we do that, let's bring this code, paste it to our editor so that we could work with it. Now, let's look at some of these examples. So, ooh, okay, it's not much helpful. However, let's go over what Fibonacci numbers are real quick. So, pretty much, uh, it always starts with one, one and one. To get the next number, you add the previous two numbers. So the previous two numbers are one and one. So that's two. One plus one is two. Now what is one plus two? It's three. Now what is two plus three? That is five. And then three plus five is eight and so on. So these are Fibonacci numbers. Now, um, let's see. We want to add up all the odd Fibonacci numbers that are less than or equal to num. So in 10, we're adding up 1, 1, not 2, because that's even, 3, 5, and what? And that's it. 1, 1, 3, and 5, and that will give us 10. All right, so that's how we do this problem. Now, let's see what we can do. But before we go on, I have a slight confusion that this question is not clear on. Notice that they say that num is a positive integer. So what's the smallest number that num can take? And the answer to that is one, because one is the smallest positive integer. Now, what should some fibs of one give us? Uh, the rule is we have to add up all num odd numbers that are less than or equal to num. So are we just adding up one or are we adding up one plus one? Because there's two of the ones. I think we're adding up one plus one. I think that's a better answer. Uh, so this one then would be equal to two. Uh, so the way that we are going to do this is we are gonna declare a sum variable. So we're gonna say let sum and we're gonna say that is equal to zero for now. We may change it. And at the end, we add up everything. We're going to return that value like so. Now, in, we have to know all the Fibonacci numbers, uh, specifically the odd Fibonacci numbers that are less than or equal to this parameter here. So in order to, how do we know what the Fibonacci numbers before that are? We have to calculate them ourselves. So we're going to build them up. We're going to start with uh, two variables where I'm just going to say A and they're going to both start at 1 because Fibonacci numbers always start at 1. And let's explain what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to do a while loop on uh, while B is less than or equal to number, this num parameter. And we are going to, this is what we're going to do every single iteration. A is going to grab B's value and B, in turn, will grab uh, the sum of A plus B. So here is the loop that we're going to have. Whoops. In the beginning, A is 1 and B is 1, right? Uh, in the next iteration, A will take place of its old B value, and B will take place of the sum of these two, which is 2. And then A will take place of the old B value, which is 2, and B will take place with the sum of the values, like so. So that's what we're going to do. This is how we're going to keep track of our Fibonacci sequence. So let's do a while loop. And we are, because B is always the greater number than A, greater or equal to, B is always greater or equal to A, we're going to say while B is less than or equal to number, we're going to do this loop. And this is what we're going to do. Mm, we will add if 
uh, we will only add b to our sum if b is an odd number. And how do we check if a number is odd or not? We just do b mod 2 modulo 2 cannot equal 0. That's a that's a uh, exclamation mark and a 2 equal sign like so. If this is equal to 0, if b mod 2 is equal to 0, that means that b is divisible by 2. In other words, b is an even number. But if it's not equal to 0, that means it's an odd number because it's not divisible by 2. So what do we want to do if b is not divisible by 2? Then we want to add it to our sum. Now, why aren't we adding a? Because if we add a to the sum, then we're adding uh, the value twice. Because a will always take place the value of b uh, in the next iteration. So we only need to add a, uh, b. However, this poses a problem. Because uh, the first value that a took, this 1, we want to add that to the sum too. But in this loop, we never use that. So what, we, what I'm going to do to rectify that is let sum equal to 1. We're going to let sum equal to a. Or to be more explicit, I think this is even better. We're going to say let sum is equal to a. We're going to say that's 1, and then we're going to keep on adding b to it from now on. So if it's, if it's odd, we add it. Otherwise, we don't add it. But whether we add it or not, we got to get update our values of a and b. So in order to do that, I'm going to introduce a temporary variable called temp. Uh, and this will take place of b for now. Uh, so remember what I said? We said that a, uh, let's see, we will say that b is equal to a plus b. And then a will take place the value of the old b. Now we can't do this because b just got a new value. So if we do this, we're giving a the wrong value. We're giving it the update, the new value, which is not what we want. We want a, we want a to have the old value, the old value of b. And that's why we introduce this temp variable. So this would work right here. Now, let's see. I think this will work. So let's see if let's see if some fibs. I'm gonna cancel log the output of this. Let's see if this gives us. Uh, what should it give us? I think it should give us. Let's see if some fibs of four. What are all the odd numbers? We have one and one and three. So that should give us five. Let's see if it does, and it does. Let's see if free code camp likes this solution. Run tests, and they do. Now, I want us to refactor this somewhat. Um, I thought about many different ways that we could tackle this problem, but uh, none of them are really as good as this one. So I'm just going to do a little shortcuts here and there. So for example, we are going to say, uh, instead of doing b is equal to a plus b, we could just say b is plus equals to a. Uh, that means we're adding on to B, just A. So it means the same thing. So that's one thing we could do. Make sure we run the test. That works. What is? What else can we do? We could also try this. We're introducing this temp variable here because we're going to replace B with something, but we need reference to it later. That's why we're doing this. But there's another way to do this. We could say that A and B is going to take these values. B will A will take B's old value and B will take A plus B value. That will be the same thing. So in this way, we don't need to introduce a temp variable. Let's see if it works. And it does. So that's a little cleaner, I think. Albeit some people might say it's less clear. And mm, I am pretty satisfied with this. Another thing we could do is if we're going to declare, actually, we'll just keep it like this. Let's run the test. Let's see if free code camp likes this. And they do. Hey, thank you guys so much for joining me uh, with the free code camp algorithms again. Today we did uh, some all odd Fibonacci numbers. And the next time we meet, we'll be doing the sum all primes. So I highly encourage you guys to try this out on your own and check out my video the next time I upload it. If you haven't already, click like. And if you haven't already, click subscribe. Thank you guys so much for joining me and I'll see you guys next time.